This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. In our previous chapter, Chapter 4, what we saw was that in terms of the adjustment of profits, we'd have to add back non-allowable expenses. And number one in that list of add back of non-allowable expenses, and probably one you'll remember until your dying day, is depreciation. If we see depreciation debited there in our statement of profit or loss, though perfectly acceptable for uh, accounting purposes, not acceptable for taxation purposes. So we add it back. But HMRC do this, on the one hand, replacing the disallowed depreciation charge, on the other hand, with a system known as capital allowances. This is how tax relief will be given for capital expenditure incurred. But note, not just for any capital expenditure, qualifying capital expenditure. And that will mean we're talking about qualifying plant and machinery. So you must understand right from the outset that just because a business incurs capital expenditure, that does not mean that that capital expenditure will qualify for capital allowances. We will only be able to claim capital allowances on qualifying plant and machinery. So for example, should the business purchase a building for use within the trade, the capital cost of that building, that is not plant and machinery and therefore does not attract capital allowances. You'll get tax relief for that expenditure, that capital cost of the building purchased, not through the capital allowances system, but eventually when the, biz, uh, when the property, the business property is sold, the cost will be an allowable deduction in working out any chargeable gain that may arise. But in terms of the capital allowances, it is on qualifying plant and machinery. So capital expenditure to qualify for capital allowances must be qualifying plant and machinery. Right, so what do we know here, looking now at your notes at the beginning of chapter five, what is this qualifying plant and machinery? Generally you find, as we see here, as assets that perform an active function in the business. What that means is, we're talking about something with which, rather than in which, something with which the trade is carried on. Now that includes all sorts of things, this definitions of plant and machinery. Also, it's not just the sort of thing that you'd find in a factory plant there, uh, a lathe or whatever for use within that particular business. We're also talking about such things here as office furniture and fittings. Equipment including movable office partitioning. There's one movable note office partitioning. If it was fixed, then that would not be something with which the trade is being carried out. It would be representing something in which the trade is carried out, part of the building, and therefore no capital allowances would be available. Machinery will include motor vehicles. Motor vehicles. Probably in this chapter, chapter five, we have more hmm, fun dealing with motor vehicles, motors, most especially motor cars there, when it comes to the capital allowances available. They almost certainly will feature in any exam question you see involving capital allowances, and capital allowances will be involved in every exam. Can't imagine that we don't see all of the exam questions these days in terms of um, the ACCA uh, showing us what they've set in their exams on their website. But again, it always has been, and I must imagine it always will be, an integral part of the uh, assessment of your exam. So you need to know these. Right, motor cars are going to be the most interesting one because there are special rules that deal with them that cause us the greatest degree of interest or of course, difficulty, as we may recognize that word to be. Motor vehicles, computers, including building alterations necessary for the installation of plants and machinery. Yeah, if you've got some uh, huge lathe to be introduced to the factory and you've had to have some building alterations to fit that particular item of plant, then that will be a part of the plant and machinery cost and therefore will be available and allowable for capital allowances. Now, I just said a moment ago, and it stands true, 
that when you buy a building, the cost of the building is not qualifying plant or machinery, so there's no capital allowances available. But in recent years, parts of that building, in terms of its costs, do attract capital allowances. And that's this next point here. Capital allowances are now also available on the integral features of a building. There's a term you'll come to know and love, integral features of a building. Quite often the examiner have been relatively kind here and said, and we bought these particular items which were integral parts of the building. They've actually put the word in. However, they don't need to do that, so you should know examples of what we're talking about. So when they break out the analysis of a building's cost, what therefore will in fact qualify as integral features. It would include lifts, escalators within the building, electrical systems, heating and air cooling systems for use within the building. That would be classified as qualifying plant and machinery. We also need to know, having established what plant and machinery, what things you purchase during the accounting period will qualify for plant and machinery, on what cost will you be able to claim that capital allowance? Now this comes down to, to begin with, whether the business is or is not VAT registered. If the business is that registered, and the input VAT is recoverable on the purchase of the asset, this is the usual situation, then the VAT exclusive net cost will be available for capital allowances. So for example, VAT registered business purchases an item for plant during the accounting period for a net cost of 10,000 exclusive of VAT. The VAT thereon, 20% is the standard rate of VAT that we now have. 20% on 10,000 would be 12,000. So to buy that item of plant, your invoice will have to pay 12,000. That's 10,000 pounds plus 2,000 pounds VAT. So you pay over 12,000 pounds, that is your gross cost. As long as your VAT registered business the input VAT on this item of plant is recoverable, and that is usually the situation we deal with, the exception we'll talk about in a moment, then it is the net cost of £10,000 that is eligible for capital allowances, and the £2,000 of input VAT that you've suffered on the purchase, that will go off to a VAT account, and that will separately be dealt with in terms of your VAT return, usually, as you'll see in a later chapter on VAT, usually on a quarterly basis, where it will determine how much VAT you have to pay over to HMRC. But you'll be able to set against the VAT that you receive from your sales, the VAT you've suffered on your purchases and expenses, and also now on this plant and machinery. Now, we did say there, on the personal asset, that will be available for capital allowances, the VAT is recoverable on the purchase of the asset. If the VAT is not recoverable, as on the purchase of a car. Now, I said to you cars were going to be the most interesting one. Here's the first involvement. If you buy cars, and the vast majority of cars going through the business are likely to have some private use, not going to be 100% business use. And on that basis, we will not be able to recover the input VAT. So what that means is, if we were to buy a car now for £10,000 plus 20% VAT, so we pay £12,000 for it, then as the input VAT on cars is specifically not recoverable, then our net cost is going to be £12,000 because we can't get the £2,000 back. We will suffer a cost of £12,000. So the capital allowances would be available on the VAT inclusive figure for £12,000. So if the VAT is not recoverable, as on the purchase of a car, or if the business is not VAT registered, then the VAT inclusive price will attract capital allowances. As I've just said there in our example, that would be £12,000. More often than not, in most exam questions, they don't bring VAT into it, and they just say, this is the cost of the asset, and you don't even have to consider VAT, it's not an issue. 
However, in a VAT question, you may have to deal with this issue. So be aware. Okay, so we must prepare a capital allowance computation for the same period and now as we did our adjustment of profit, that's the accounting period of the business. And we will be then, having computed the capital allowances, we'll be able to deduct them from the adjusted trading profit, which exercise, which computation you saw previously in chapter four. So what therefore capital allowances will be available for us? How will we put this computation together? Right, looking therefore at the second section here as regards our capital allowance computations, we will now discover that there are three types of capital allowance that we may have to deal with. And we will deal with them in the order in which you see them written here. As we've said, we prepare the computation for the business's accounting period, same as the statement of profit or loss. The first allowance that we need to know about is annual investment allowance, or as we'll know it and love it from now on, as AIA. Now this is a relatively generous allowance because the AIA gives an allowance of 100% for the first £200,000 of qualifying expenditure incurred in what should usually be a standard 12-month accounting period. Now notice there, that's based on a 12-month period. So if, as you'll see in the next sentence, if the accounting period that you have prepared your accounts for is other than 12 months, so it could be short, it could be long, then we're going to time a portion, the available AIA. So if, as it's mentioned here, for example, the business prepared its accounts for a nine month period, then the AIA available would be nine twelfths of 200,000, the annual figure, and therefore would be 150,000 pounds. If, for example, you had prepared accounts for an opening 15 or 16 month period, uh, such as you'll see, in fact, in our next chapter to, together, chapter six, if that were to happen, no problem, you just now take 15 twelfths or 16 twelfths of the AIA figure. So it's time apportioned based on the length of that period. Net down, nine twelfths if it's a nine month period, gross up if it's a long period, 15, 12, 16, 12, whatever it may be. £200,000 limit is the one that we will use in our exam answers to our exam questions, irrespective of the dates of the expenditure incurred. The reality is, for all of the periods that our questions may cover, the AIA may be other than 200000 Before it was two hundred, it was 500000 It has been as low as 25000 so there have been different levels of AIA over different periods. We, however, don't have that problem at F6. It's just a standard 200,000 AIA to use. Now, although that is available on the vast majority of plant and machinery, meaning that in real life, capital allowance computations for these businesses is relatively simple. You buy qualifying plant machinery, you claim 100% AIA thereon, and that's it. So every year, whatever you buy comes in within your AIA limit, you get 100% capital allowance, and the full cost is deducted from your adjusted trading profit. But that is a far too easy outcome so far as our exam is concerned. So inevitably, in any exam question, we're going to have more than just AIA. And after AIA, we have to consider writing down allowance. WDA, writing down allowance. Now, the reason why I've mentioned that. Here, our AIA is available on the purchase of all plant machinery except motor cars. Because what is going to happen on cars, no AIA, and most cars, there'll be one exception to this, most cars will therefore be eligible for writing down allowance. Nowhere near as generous as AIA, the percentage allowances are much, much smaller, but at least it is an allowance. So there's no AIA on cars. 
What therefore do we get WDA on? Firstly, any expenditure in excess of the AIA limit. So if the business spent £250,000 on qualifying plant and machinery, then 200,000 AIA would be the limit, the maximum you could go to. The remaining 50,000 would then rank for writing down allowance. Depending on the type of plant and machinery purchased, that would then give rise to and dictate the level of writing down allowance, because there's not just one figure, there can be either of two percentages, 18% or 8%, as we'll see in a few moments' time. So any expenditure in excess of the AI limit, or of course, as we've said, on the majority of motor cars. Again, where, dependent as we'll see soon, on the CO2 emissions of that car, that will give rise to and dictate which particular writing down allowance is available, whether it's the 18% or the lower 8% level. So what do we get for our writing down allowance? Anything over and above the AIA limit of 200,000, and cars, they get writing down allowance. As I said, one exception as regards what the cars are, which we'll see later. In terms of writing down allowance, as we said, the cost of most plant machinery that's qualified for AIA, that is, sorry, that is not qualified for AIA, will be allocated to a pool of expenditure that will then be eligible for a writing down allowance of either, as we said, 18% per annum, if the expenditure qualifies for the so-called main pool, or sadly only 8% if allocated to the special rate pool. It's special, but in a bad way. Special is not a good thing here, because it means we cut the writing down allowance from 18% down to 8%. 8% per annum, which is available on a reducing balance basis, year on year, reducing balance. It's not straight line on original cost, it's a reducing balance basis. As with AIA, the WDA will be time apportioned where the accounting period is other than 12 months. So, in our capital allowance computation, as we'll see soon, we would initially, from a list of items of plant and machinery purchased during the accounting period, identify which of those qualified for AIA. We would then give AIA, but to a maximum limit of £200,000. Any expenditure over that, like with my 250000 example of a moment ago, the extra amount in excess of the limit, 50000 as I said, that would qualify then for writing down allowance. In addition to that, motor cars. Most motor cars, one exception, again we'll see it soon, most motor cars expenditure will then be eligible for WDA. The only issue about the WDA is that we don't, and this keeps it simple, we don't do individual calculations on individual assets. We just look at the total expenditure, 250,000, 200,000 AIA, 50,000 will then be eligible for WDA. But depending on the type of asset that we purchased, the WDA available may be either 18% or 8%, and that's again an issue that we'll explore later. As well as the expenditure in excess of the AIA limit, cars, other than the one exception that we keep referring to, they do not get AIA, so in which case it's WDA for them. The third and final allowance to deal with on your capital allowance computation, if it's been purchased, I said about cars, most cars will qualify for WDA and just WDA. If you're really lucky, if lucky is the right word, new cars, notice not second-hand new cars, with CO2 emissions up to 75 grams per kilometre, they attract a 100% first year allowance. That first year allowance is never time apportioned. So, if you've got a nine-month period, you know that the maximum AIA is nine-twelfths of the £200,000 limit. Your WDA will be nine-twelfths of the 18% or 8% figures. 
But your first year allowance, doesn't matter whether it's a nine month, 15, 16, two month period, doesn't matter, it's a one off. You get the 100% capital allowance, the 100% first year allowance. And there's just one asset in that category for FYA, for us, new cars with these low CO2 emissions, anything up to but not exceeding 75 grams per kilometre. Now, before we take this any further, take a moment there just to look back at what we've got in relation to AIA, WDA and FYA. But also to be aware, as we structure, as we will in a moment's time, the capital allowances computation, that is the order in which we will deal with the transactions. We'll go for AIA, followed by WDA, followed if necessary, by first year allowance. So take a moment just to uh, check through that. You don't want to pause at this particular point in time. Take a moment to check through, and then we'll uh, continue with a little illustration that awaits us over the page. Okay, well, here's our illustration now. Illustration one. Richard commenced to trade on 1st of July, 16. Prepared accounts to the 31st of December, 16, and thereafter to the 31st of December. That's the chosen accounting date. Richard made the following acquisitions of main pool assets. Now, again, I'm telling you here that these and most assets are main pool assets. Uh, if uh, the special rate pool is involved, we'll have a separate note on this later, and we'll have to learn those particular assets that are special rate pool. Anything else that qualifies will be main pool. These were told main pool. What we will do is to put together our capital allowance computations for the periods involved. Now, we started 1st of July 16, prepared accounts to December 16. We can immediately see that the opening accounting period is merely a six month period. That's going to have consequences, both in terms of your AIA and your WDA. But what was bought in the accounting periods in question? Now again, I've allocated here the expenditure, the transactions to the accounting periods. What you could have had was just a list of the three items of plant and machinery purchased, going there from 1st of July 16 to this one 19th of May 17. What you would then have had to have done is on your question page where those three were listed, you'd have to draw a line between those that would be allocated to the first six month period, which of course is those two above the line, and then below what will be allocated to the 12 month period. Here, I've done that for you. And what you might have is here are the two accounting periods, but here's just a list of additions and indeed disposals, but more of those later. But a list of additions and you must firstly allocate to which accounting period do they relate. So on that list, we now identify the allowances that would be available. So we've got acquisitions of main pool assets, plant and computer equipment. All of those, each of them, would attract AIA. We get AIA in relation to them. The next accounting period, machinery. Again, AIA. We don't have here the complication of any cars being purchased during a period that may then either attract WDA or first year allowance instead. All we've got to do is to deal with the basic items of plant and machinery. So we put together our capital allowance computations, noting here that again, we prepare these computations for accounting periods. What's the first one to contend with? The six months to the 31st of December 16. That six month period to December 16. Right, what have we got? We've got all of this is additions that will rank for AIA. But we have a problem in that opening accounting period. We list them out to begin with. Now, we'll talk about these columns in a moment, but we'll also have 
a little working column here that you can identify just with a pound sign in. That's a pound sign or meant to be. Or what you might do is just write in AIA. This particular column here, this inside listing working column, may be headed AIA stroke FYA. We'll use this as a column to list out expenditure that here qualifies for AIA or later, not in this illustration, that would qualify for FYA. So we've got the two plant computers, total £150,000. Well, the AIA limit, we said, was 200000 so does that mean that we'll be able now to claim 100% AIA on all of that expenditure? Answer, as you can clearly see here, is no, because this period is only six months. So maximum six twelfths of 200 is 100,000. So the 100,000 goes across into the allowances column, always the far right hand side of your page. The last column is the allowances column. That is always the far right hand column. If, as you probably will have, expenditure that qualifies for AIA, then the first column on the left hand side of your page will be headed AIA, possibly even AIA stroke FYA. 100,000 qualifies, 50,000 therefore goes into the main pool. We're told that their main pool assets, you will have to learn from later in this chapter which assets are special rate pool assets that then allows you to identify on the list of plant and machine you purchased, whether it's AIA main pool expenditure or whether it's AIA special rate pool expenditure. But that's a learning exercise later. We've seen that the AIA was limited because the length of the opening period was only six months. So too is next the writing down allowance limited. Its main pool, so it would have been 18% of the £50,000 allocated to this pool. But because it's only a six month period, then the maximum is six twelfths of that. So 18% of 50,000 would have been 9,000. Take half of that six twelfths, and there's four and a half thousand. Again, any allowances that you get to claim, you transfer to your allowances available column. So the AIA went straight in, and now the WDA goes across into the allowances available column. There were no low emission cars purchased during the period, no cars at all purchased during the period. So the only allowances there to deal with AIA and on the excess over the, uh, the limit, we were able to get WDA. So totally done 104,500. That would be deducted from the adjusted trading profit for that self same six month period, and you would have your tax adjusted trading profit accordingly. What does it now mean? We've got on our main pool £45,500 now to carry forward from the end of this period to the start of the next accounting period. Tax written down at value brought forward, tax written down value carried forward, TWDB, an acceptable abbreviation by the way, tax written down at value. What transactions occurred in this period? Not a lot. We simply bought there, as we can see, the machinery, £30,000 that qualifies, of course, for AIA. So in, oops, in this computation, therefore, additions for AIA, 30000 again, in your AIA column. You get the 30000 you go, go up to 200000 it's a 12-month period, and the 30000 is transferred into the allowances available column. As you haven't gone above the income limit, sorry, the limit, uh, the two hundred thousand pound limit, then there's nothing that goes into the pool because you've got hundred percent AIA available on all of the expenditure. What is still available is the writing down allowance on the residue of last year's, the first year's expenditure. That tax written down value brought forward is forty five thousand five hundred. What do we now get? 18% writing down allowance. Full 18%, main pool, 12 month period. Hopefully that, check the number, is 8,190, which again transfers across into the allowances available column. Add them up, get the total, 
take it away from the adjusted trading profit for this year ended December 17. It also means that the tax written down value carried forward into the next period is 37,310. That'll be picked up as the tax written down value brought forward at the start of that next period. Now, we've already noted the different allowances and the rates of available allowance. Don't worry, you don't have to remember those figures because that information there in section three is given to you. You are told the rates of allowance. Here, the AIA is 100, these are percentages, 100% based on an expenditure limit of 200,000 pounds. We're also told in terms of our uh, writing down allowances that plant machinery main pool is 18, special rate pool is 8. Cars, they were the most interesting ones. New cars, low emissions cars, 100% first year allowance, or otherwise, as we know on other cars, there's no AIA, but there would be WDA either 18% or 8% based on the level of CO2 emissions. There are the figures we need to be aware of. Don't have to learn it, that's given to you. But again, probably familiarity, question practice will mean that you don't have to keep referring. But those are the levels given there. Right, what I want you to do therefore between this time and our next session, there'll be several sessions here on chapter five indeed, is to go back through what we've said, look at the allowances that are available, AIA, WDA, FYA, establish what those allowances are available on, and rework through that first illustration before we take it any further. Look forward to seeing you in our next session.